Hi, it's Carla again. In the area of the happinesses, when I look at three different happinesses, we saw happiness last week. This week we're going to look at contentment. Happiness is about, yay, looking around yourself or looking at the future. There's something to look forward to. Awesome. It's wonderful. It's funny. Contentment is a different emotion and it's kind of connected to pride, to feeling proud of yourself. Um, it's connected to self-esteem as well. So in a psyche where contentment is free to do what it needs to do, you will do some good work, like you will finish a job that you had been avoiding. You know, your, your anxiety said, you need to stop procrastinating and get this job done. And you're like, oh, okay. So you finish the job and it's done. And your contentment in that situation should come up and say, good job. Nicely done. And then fade away. Right? Good job. That was good. And then you go do your thing. So contentment is a very important sort of internal reward system for when you have responded well to your emotions or taken good care of yourself. You know, if you exercised even though you didn't want to, at the end of it you'd be like, okay, there was a reason to do that. And your contentment will say, yeah, you pushed through. Good job. So contentment should come up when you do things that you feel proud about. Contentment is a great emotion. Um, in the language of emotion cards, I call it pleasure and appreciation. And the gifts are enjoyment, satisfaction, self-esteem, renewal, confidence, and fulfillment. And there isn't really a question to ask of your contentment unless you don't know why it's there. You might say, contentment, what did I just do that you think is awesome? Because I want to do it again. <laughs> okay. But basically, it's just a statement. Thank you, contentment. Thank you for renewing my faith. Thank you for noticing what I did. I appreciate it. And then let contentment go. But a lot of people, especially if they've read books about self-esteem, want to feel good about themselves all the time. Even if they haven't done anything that they should feel good about, right? I want to have high self-esteem. And that's very problematic. And this is another situation where if you look at the happinesses as positive emotions, you are not going to catch the problems. Looking at them as really important single emotions in a, in a world of 17 emotions, each of which has its own job, each of which, which has its own intelligence, each of which brings its own skills. You can begin to look at all the emotions in a more holistic and intelligent way as powerful forms of intelligence that can go a little screwy, right? So here's how contentment can go off the rails. If you have too much, right? And if you don't have appropriate shame watching over your behavior. Too much contentment and not enough healthy shame equals bullying. I think a lot of people think that bullies have low self-esteem, which is why they lash out at people. But if you've ever had low self-esteem, you'll know that you don't have the energy to lash out. You would more be looking at people and wishing you could be like them. You wouldn't want to slap them down. What they find in psychological testing is that people who bully have a, an artificially inflated sense of self-esteem. They have all that contentment. You did a great job. You're awesome. Look at what you're doing. You're fabulous. But without the shame that would say, your behavior is inappropriate right now. You just hurt that person. Look at that person's face, which is what healthy shame will tell you. Look at what you just did. You need to feel remorse. You need to apologize. Bullies and people with unbalanced contentment do not have that thing working. They don't have shame working. They have a problem with shame. They may have been shamed and kind of decided the shame is not important, right? So what you want to see is contentment and shame working like this. It's like, so I feel shame and I apologize and contentment comes up and says, nice job. That was painful, but you did a good thing, right? Um, if shame is gone, contentment's just going to be like, hey, whatever you do is good. So you go bully somebody and you make a really funny joke at their expense, your shame, at their expense, your shame is going to be like, ha, you're cool. So too much contentment that is not balanced by healthy shame is bullying. It is abusive behavior. 
It is making someone into a laughing stock. It is um, uh, internet behavior, you know, going on a comment thread and just making problems for everybody. Um, it is not having a good uh, balance between these two very powerful emotions. Now, as you all know, if you have too much shame, your shame's like, nothing you do is good. You're never perfect enough. Every weight you are is the wrong weight. Every, clothes, every piece of clothing you buy is the wrong piece of clothing. Your hair also looks terrible, right? If you have shame, contentment will just never be able to come up. Contentment will never be able to say, hey, you did a good job. No, slap. And your contentment is terrible too, right? So too much shame of the unhealthy variety, where it's like constantly battering you, will make a problem with your shame. Your self-esteem can't rise because shame just keeps slapping it down. And that would be a situation where you need to work to get to healthy shame. Healthy shame is shame that lives, helps you live up to a, um, a moral structure that you agree with. Unhealthy shame helps you live up to a moral structure that may have been, um, uh, what would you call it, placed on you um, forced onto you, like a media shame. Um, you smell, you're the wrong weight, you're the wrong height, you're not wealthy enough, you're not whatever, you're not whatever, and, you're, and your contentment can't rise because those messages are toxic and your shame is listening to them, right? So in this situation you would use the burning contracts practice and therapy and talking to friends to remove those messages and get rid of them and find messages that work. I like my clothes the way they are. And your contentment says, then that's cool. Whatever weight I am is the weight I am. And your contentment says, <laughs> then it's awesome, right? It's to have shame and contentment working gracefully together in the dance that they can do in a healthy psyche where emotions are understood properly. Rather than having them butt up against each other, knock one out, you know, kind of a so too much contentment, not enough contentment, both are problematic, right? You want to be in the just right. This is like, just right. That's the three little bears kind of a thing, or Goldilocks, where you want to have these two emotions in a very good balance. Low self-esteem can be a sign of shame crushing your contentment. Inflated self-esteem can be a sign of shame not being available for you in any reasonable way so that your behavior just gets more and more absurd and you become more and more of a, like a social, I don't know what, like a, like, a, like a pinball just smashing around because you have no skills. You're just a, you're just a thing happening in your social world instead of, a, instead of a relational, loving, caring person. You're just kind of, it's me, it's whatever I wanna do. So too much contentment? No. Not enough contentment? No. Too much shame? No. Not enough shame? No. These have to be balanced. So if your whole focus is working on self-esteem and you're not also working on holding yourself accountable for the things that you do, which healthy shame does, then your self-esteem is going to be unbalanced. And so I would say, rather than looking at self-esteem, boom, move that aside, look at the emotions that help you develop self-esteem that's healthy. Your contentment, yes. Your shame, certainly. These two need to be in balance. Oh, look at this, a negative emotion, shame, and a positive emotion, contentment, nonsense. They are both completely necessary emotions, negative and positive, and no place in the emotional realm. They will make you, this idea about negative and positive emotions will make you emotionally incapable. Look at emotions as the brilliant intelligence they are. 17 forms of intelligence are available to you every minute of every day. Welcome all of your emotions. They each bring you a form of genius. The happinesses do, the sadnesses do, the angers do. The fears do. All of them are necessary. Contentment is a beautiful emotion in a world of beautiful emotions. I hope you feel appropriately content with yourself this week. I'll see you soon.